Welcome everyone, my name is Peter Rajivos and I will talk about open wash and attacking different machines. So vulnerability scanning and uh, using Metasploit to test the vulnerabilities what they found. First of all, we will need some virtual machines. One of them is a Kali virtual machine, it's here. I show you the IP address of it. This is the 192.168.168.55. And I have two other virtual machines. One of them is a 2008 R2 64 bit. It is, of course, in the same IP range. I just change a bit the size of the text. It has the IP address 192.168.168.28. And I have another virtual machine that's uh, Windows 7. I just log in. And the IP address of it. 192.168.168.10. So all of them are in the same subnet and hopefully they can see each other. I can see the 2008 R2 and I can see the Windows 7. Fine. So this is the environment. We have three virtual machines, one Kali and two target practically. I recommend some older operating systems, for example, Windows 7, Windows 2008 R2, uh, because then you will get some result. Okay, first of all, you have to install the OpenWash because it is not installed by default. It can be done with the apt get inst uh, install openwash command. Of course, I have already installed it because it takes a long time and I didn't want you to wait for long, so it is already installed. After you install the openwash, the first command what you have to run is the openwash setup. It will set up the openwash. During the setup, it will download uh, the rule sets and it will take a very, very long time. Uh, it could be about an hour because it download more than a gigabyte rule set. These are practically the same rule set or very similar rule set than the, the Nessus rule set. At the end of this setup application, you will get a very long and ugly GUID. Please record that GUID because it will be your password, your first password. Uh, so save it to a notepad file or whatever you want. Just don't forget it, that's the important point. After you have set up the OpenWash, oh, I want to show some other commands. The OpenWash feed update. Once you have done the setup, later you are able to update the OpenWash by the help of this command. Also, it can run quite long time, not as long as the first time, but quite long time. And after that, you can uh, run the openwash with the openwash start command. The first start will take very, very long time, again, because it, it has to compile the rule set, so it is just downloaded. So again, just prepare, for example, half an hour starting or even a longer one. The later starts are not so fast, as you can see it is still starting and it will take about a minute for me to start up, but at least it is a much, much faster uh, process. What I recommend to you, um, I show it during the starting, you have the net start command and check if the openwash is already running. Use the NLTP TCP command and hopefully it listens on the port 9392. This is the default port of the OpenWash, uh, or sorry, more exactly the Greenbone interface for the OpenWash. Uh, one more thing, during the upget install, when you install it, it depends on the version, or depends on the Linux distribution and on the version. Theoretically, it installs this uh, Greenbone interface, but uh, if it is not, then you can install it with the opt-get install greenbone 
Security Assistant command. So that's another one. It's uh, much faster because it's a web interface. Okay, now it is started, as we can see. And I have the green ball listening on this port. So at newer versions, uh, it automatically opens the browser, the Firefox, and automatically opens you the green ball assistant. But now I just open it. So I go to the HTTPS and S without S it is not working. I show you without the S it is not working. Only 27001 column 9392. And the connection was wizard, blah, blah, blah. But if you add HTTPS, then it will work, hopefully. Yes, it is working. And you have to type here your username, admin, and your first password, what I mentioned, it was printed by the open wash setup application and the long ugly GUID is that. I have already changed the password. So I log in with my password, it's password one. It's just test environment, oops. Hmm. Oh. So it, it is not started yet totally. We are still waiting for something. It's here. Sometimes it happens. No problem. We just try it again. And now we log it in. Uh, when you first log it in, your first task is just go to the administration users. Find here your admin user, here it is. And change the password because as I mentioned, your first password is just an ugly GUID. So I come here, edit it. And type here a new password, whatever you want. And click on the save button. And then you will have another password that you can remember for. Of course, you can create additional users if you want, but now it is not important for me. Okay, so this is the first task that you have to do. And after it, we want to scan some remote machines. Uh, to do that, you have to create targets. And if you want, you can create port lists. Uh, the target is mandatory, you have to create that one. The port list, I usually recommend to create port lists because the scanning with OpenWash takes a very, very long time. It's quite slow application. Uh, you can speed it up by first uh, scanning the open ports of the computers, for example, with the command nmop minus small s, capital S, minus pn, uh, so consider them alive minus n to don't try to resolve the DNS name, minus uh, t4, that's the speed, minus v to be webbers, and minus a, uh, this is the aggressive mode, it turns on the OS operating system mm, check, the application check, and uh, the script scanning. So practically tries to figure out what op operating system was, uh, what application runs on the different ports, and it will run some additional script uh, for testing purposes. Great, and uh, I want to test the 192, 168, 168, 28 machine, and 192, 168, 168, 10 machine. Okay, and oh, one more thing. I recommend you to save the result to file. I will call it as test free. The OA means uh, save the result in every possible format. So I will put all. And this is only the prefix of the file name because uh, the extension will be added 
uh, three different files will be created. One of them is XML, the other one is grep format, and the last one is the normal and mock format, whichever you prefer. So this is how I used to run it. And I just run it. And it will give me the open ports on the different machines. Here are the open ports. And I used to create, go to the configuration port lists and create here a port list based on the NMAP result. So I just come here, click on this star, new port list. I give it some name like test three and type here the port numbers which were open. And of course, now I don't wait for it. But otherwise, I recommend you to do this one because it can speed up your test significantly. Okay, then go to the configuration targets and here create some target list. I have already two tests here, but I create a new one. Test fee. You can enter here the targets manually or you can read from file. Now I choose the manual ones because I have only two machines, so I don't create a file because of two machines. And these are my two machines. You have, you are able to exclude here host, for example, if you type here as for whole subnet, then you can exclude host from here. I always recommend if you enter a whole subnet, then do not forget to exclude yourself. It's a crucial point. Um, it can be quite misleading or disturbing if you test yourself also. Okay, uh, you can choose the port, uh, the port list here. So which ports to scan. I mentioned I used to create my own port list, but now I didn't create it, so I can I choose one. For example, the default one, this one. Again, I want to warn you, this all TCP can be, can be very, very time consuming, or some others can be very, very time consuming as well. Live test. So how to test if the machine is alive or not? For this one, I used to set the consider alive, so it will take the remote machines as an alive one. Uh, it's important because today most of the computers has firewalls turned on and um, only a very few ports are open and the consider alive tests are usually based on that phenomenon. They are testing some ports first time and if none of them is open then they consider the computer as turned off compute machines and they are not and the application not testing it. So this is why I recommend to consider it alive to definitely test every port what I gave it because then I will get the result as I what I expect and not just this computer was turned off goodbye. <laughs> so this is how I used to set it up. Here here have the credentials. You are able to enter SSH, Samba, ESXi, so VMware and SNMP credentials. If you are testing your own network, then I definitely recommend you to, to enter here credentials because in that case, the OpenWash is able to log on to the computer and it is able to query the operating system version, the service spec level, the installed hotfix and things like that. The open ports, for example, it can able to query it with netstart uh, and things like that. It will be much better result than if you are just testing externally. Uh, but of course, it depends on the situation. Again, if you are testing your own company, then I recommend to add the required credentials. It will be much better result in that case. And create the targets. And it is created. I have some targets here. Uh, now we can go to the scans, go to the tasks. And here I can create the scanning task. Again, I click on this blue star and new task. I give it a name, for example, test three. I choose here the scan targets. That's why I had to create it. Great. You can schedule it if you want, but usually we run it immediately. Uh, you can set if it is alterable or non-alterable. If you want to delete automatically the, the oldest reports or not, which scanner you want to use, 
usually the open var default what you want to use because you have that scanner scan config. So how do you want to scan if it is a discovery, full scan, uh, full and very deep ultimate, for example. So it, you can uh, choose how deep your scan will be. Uh, usually first I just run full and fast scan, so the default one, and I run a second one with, uh, with slower settings what takes much more time to run for the computer. Usually I prefer to have a quick result, which contains most of the findings, but maybe not all of them, but I can already start to work with them and not just wait, for example, four or five times as much as for this fast cam. So it usually works to run a fast cam first time. Okay, you can set the network interface if you are connecting to the same network so more than one interfaces, for example, you connect to the same network with Wi-Fi and with uh, cable as well. Usually it is not a problem because the computer will choose the fastest interface and that's fine for you, but here you can definitely define the interface that you want to use. For example, you had to give the IP address what you are testing from and you want to guarantee that it will use only that IP address every time. Order of the target host, I always use the sequential order, it's random order or reverse order, maybe you can use it, but I don't know why. The important point is just test them all. Okay, uh, the maximum concurrently executed hosts, so how many host tests at the same time, and uh, how many tests run on the same host in parallel. Those are the two settings. If you increase those numbers, then the test of course will be faster, but I want to warn you that maybe your computer will be the bottleneck in this case. So make experiences with your own computer, with your own resources, how you are using it and what is the maximum expected numbers here. What is, what's not starts to kill your computer. For example, it runs out of the memory and it just freezes down also because of the network delays. Uh, some result will be false. So it, it can happen, so be careful with the increasing of those numbers, but you can of course do it. And I create this task. It is created. And I have here this new test free task. And you can run it with this play button here to start it. It is started. I recommend you to set this uh, refresh interval, for example, 30, 60 seconds. My one is already set, but by default it is, it, it is uh, at the no auto refresh. And I used to recommend it because otherwise this page does not refresh and you just simply not see if anything happens or not happens. You have to push the refresh button here. Okay, now the 30 seconds just passed and it's reloading. And now I am at 1%. I used to take a look at this window sometimes if it is still running. Anything happened. Uh, as you can see, the button changed to stop. I have here upper one, a stopped one, just to show you. Uh, here you can see you have two buttons, the play and the resume. So be very, very careful because uh, we tend to click on the play button again, but that's not good for you because it restarts the test from the beginning. So practically it will not continue the test. If you want to continue a stop at test, then you must choose the resume one. And it's very simple, especially if you are using it first, second time. So we have not experience with it then it's very simple to just click on the start button because that's the usual thing and even you not recognize that it is it is highlighted because the color of it is not so um, highlighting so it's, it's uh, and then you will be angry because you have to wait again the same test phases not to continue it but what i want to mention you can stop the scan and then you can resume the, the scan uh, the stopping takes can take a quite long time so if you for example doing it as during the work then don't forget to give about for example 10-15 minutes to stop 
because otherwise maybe it is just not stopped and you won't be able to resume it or something else happens. Okay, oh, yes, we got some internal levels, it's no problem. If I refresh on it, most probably I have to log in again and then it will work. Great, until it come back, I check uh, the end map result, the end map is already run, I got the result. I used to run a second round from the end map as well with the minus P, then you can define the ports, one from uh, 65,535, and I used to give it another name like dash all. This is the prefix of the name, and run this test as well, to definitely test every port on the remote machine. I come back. Now it's working again. Sometimes if your computer just busy, you can get this kind of error messages. You don't have to worry because of it. Just press the refresh or close the browser and open it. And it will be, most of the time it will be fine again. You can hear from the ventilator of the computer that it's working now and, and uh, take some time. Okay, so the test is still running, it's a 35%. Even during the run, you can go to the test. You can go to the test and check oh, at 47%, great. And you can check the results. Until now, I have 27 results, here they are. And I have one run, one report. The current one is created now. And I can click on these results to see them or go to the report. I will show both of them. I came to the result. Until now, I don't have too much result. I have a version five. There is a mail server installed. There is the SL mail installed on the Windows 10 computer. I guess you know the SL mail. It's very often showed during different exploit tutorials and whatever. And all the others are informations like which port is open. I can come here to the next pages. And so on. A PC port is open. Yes, of course, it's a Windows. And the firewall is turned off. So the PC is visible. Timestamp, I get back some timestamp value. and some information also. So you can just walk on the findings. Good. Or as I mentioned, you can go to the tasks or go to the reports. That's also good because I want to show you the reports now. And here, if you click on the test, then you can choose a report, not only those results, but the report as well. It will bring you to the report page. Here it is. And you can watch the report by click on it. Here it is. And you can save it in different formats. For example, you can choose HTML or PDF. Those are the most common one. 
XML maybe. And you can download the report in this format. You can do it even during the scan. So as you can see, my scan is not finished yet, but I can download the report. But of course it is recommended to do at the end, not at the middle of the scans. If you go to the reports, Now it is much better. I get some high results as well. Uh, I show you an earlier report because it will take, um, the scale is not linear, so as you know, maybe you have to wait the 99% for 10 minutes. But you, what you will find here, it is vulnerable for Windows SMB multiple vulnerabilities, both of the computers, these are those computers are most of them old operating system they are vulnerable for the ms1710 this is the eternal blue vulnerability so you can attack it and practically what i want to do i won't wait for the mop to finish i guess everyone can figure out the mop finishes so i use the msf console It starts up until the tie check with this 2008 computer. As you can see, there are a lot of connection from the testing machine for the different ports. Running. So the Metasploit is started and now uh, we can find uh, the vulnerability, uh, the exploit for this vulnerability. So I search for the MS 017 010. It can take a while until it found it. Maybe I need here a dash as well. Until that, I'll show you there is the search split application. Here you can also type and search exploit for this one. For example, here are some Eterna Blue with some Python codes you can run them as well. But I, ah, fine, finally I found it. But I now want to use the Metasploit one. Uh, as you can see, it has a scanner also for this vulnerability. So first, let's try the scanner. So use, paste it, show, oops, show options, and set the air hosts parameter 192, 168, and 192, 168, 168, 10. Those are my two targets. And no other parameters are mandatory. The domain, the password, the username are not mandatory. The port is 445, that's the SMB port. And that's all. I used to check if the parameters are set. Yes, they are set. And use the run or the exploit command to do the test. I need here a space. Great. 
and most likely vulnerable Windows 7 Ultimate whatever version. Though the one not seems to be vulnerable, I use them to exploit. It's a bit up for the name of it. Here is my exploit. Show options. We can set the remote host. Set app host 192.168.168.10. The remote port is already set. The domain is fine for me. The password username not mandatory. So everything is set. Uh, we can set the payload. The payload will be Windows x64 because this is exploit is created for x64 machines metapeter and reverse tcp usually we use reverse connections because in this case your target will connect back to your computer so the so the victim will connect back to the attacker after the successful target it is recommended because if there is a firewall between us or even not firewall but only or not device between us that you won't be able to connect to your victim. Only the victim will be able to connect back to you. Most of the firewall are much more allowable outside direction than with the incoming connections. So that's why we used to choose this one. Again, I check the options. I have to set because this is a reverse web to connect back. It must connect back to your computer. So set L host 192, 168, 168, uh, 55 is my computer's IP address, if I would remember, i just check it. Yes, 55 is the IP address of my computer and the port where to connect back. I will set it to 443. Great, show options, those are set, so it will be connected back to my computer. And here is the exploit target. You can use the, sh uh, the show targets command to list the possible targets, but as you can see now, we have only one target, this zero. So I have not nothing to choose from, but you can set it with the set target command and here give it an ID, for example, zero, one, two, whichever ID you want to choose. Then you can run the exploit command, and it is running, but you got some error message, unable to continue with improper OS architecture. I got this error message because this computer is a 32-bit computer, Where is it, where is it, system. And this is a 32-bit computer. And all target was 64-bit. Of course, it was not working. So you can have these kind of problems. For example, your target is 32-bit, while your exploit is 64-bit or something like that one. We can try the other computer as well. Even in spite of that, the auxiliary scanner didn't show it as a vulnerable target, but maybe just a mistake. Uh, so I will change the air host parameter to the 2008 R2 computer. So set air host 192.168.168.28 and try to exploit that one. And yes, it is open. So I wanted to show you, yes, really, because there are nice testing and nice auxiliary module and whatever, but always it is recommended to test even with the exploit because maybe that will work. 
in spite of that the auxiliary module shows that it is not working. Again, it depends on the situation because uh, the auxiliary module is more safe than the exploit module, so it has a less chance to get a blue screen of death on the victim machine or something like that. If you are doing some testing, uh, most probably your customer is not happy if you just kill some computer and it happened because of the testing. So you have to choose it carefully, but usually it can happen that the auxiliary window shows something that's not vulnerable, while in reality it is that. So always, always try it. So I am here in the metapeter. Yes, I have the nice metapeter commands. Uh, get user ID, who am I practically? I have a nice system, right? Very good. And I can do whatever I want. For example, I can get a shell. This is the remote computer now, uh, IP config. This is really the remote computer. So I'm on that, one, on that one. And I can come back from the shell to Metapreter and use all the available Metapreter commands. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show. Oh, one more thing. I exit from here. The session closed. Uh, I check. Uh, maybe it. Uh, now I don't restart it. I hope it will work. Uh, what I want to show there are some additional exploits. For example, this one. As you can see, it is good for 2016 as well. 2002 file, the Metasploit built in one is good only for Windows 7 and 2008 R2. So sometimes it definitely worth to check the search exploit. Maybe you can find some other exploits as well. And you can check the Python code of them. Oh, yes. The pass, the beginning of the pass is this one. I forgot to copy it. And within that, I will need this exploit, for example. Great. And here is the source code of the exploit. Here they are, it is tested on those versions. And for example, there is Windows 7 x86 also tested. Uh, okay, it is SP1 and most probably my one is not SP1. But hopefully it is going to work. Uh, you should check what you have to modify because sometimes there are IP address what you have to set or other things. So we just want to on it. Okay, here is some description. Okay, and if no, then we can try it. Oh, yes. It can happen sometimes if you get this kind of error message, this Python carrot M, then usually the end line is not a good one you have to use the dosh to unix command to modify the line ending of the given command. Great. Okay, it is much better just now. As you can see now it is running, just it is not able to load some kind of modules. My SMB, you have to take a Google search and put these kind of modules. We just do it in some minute. 